Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Blaze Podcast. Uh, Blaze TV's Ed Kimbley and Stu Coles, as always. Uh, and our guest on this episode, former Boston Bruin, Anaheim Mighty Duck, New York Ranger, and more importantly, Coventry Blaze forward, Matt Bolesky. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for taking uh, the time up to do this. It's, it's pretty awesome to have you on here. It's not every day we have a, a bona fide National Hockey League on here. Oh, thanks for having me. No, uh, you know, I've, I had so much fun. My wife and I in Coventry, we... Uh, any chance we got to, to get back involved and bring back some memories, uh, I'm all for it. Yeah, we did that over the uh, over the weekend just gone and uh, showed. I think it was your first game, Nottingham at home, and then the final yeah. game, uh, Steelers at home as well. So did you did you catch those? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't watch any of the games, but I caught all the all the clips and uh, all the coverage. And you know, it it was it was awesome watching that penalty shot video. That's uh, something that it still doesn't really feel real. It's kind of one of those cool. Cool things you can't explain in the 39th minute. So, um, you know, that, that, it was really fun. And it was fun to see you guys do that and uh, bring it's, back those great memories. It's hard to ramp up the most exciting playing hockey, but I guess the circumstances, and we'll talk about that a little bit <laughs> later on, kind of made it so. Um, yeah. But, like, the lockout in 2012 was the reason you, you came to Coventry. Mm-hmm. Um, to, I, so, I guess, keep your skates wet. Uh, keep yeah. keep your game sharp, um, and it came by a bit of a bad time for you because you just broke through with the Ducks. You played your first mm-hmm. full season the year before without any kind of uh, stints in the American leagues. Did you do you feel like it came a, a bad time when it when it locked out? Um, kind of for me because going it was a contract year for me too. So sitting mm-hmm. at home just waiting for it to start was not not an option for me. Uh, you know, I wanted to play and. Um, it, I find it hard personally to train by yourself to be able to go skate and, and make myself work at that level that I needed to be doing going into that year. And um, honestly, I, I wish I could tell you the story about how I ended up in Coventry, but I really, I really do not know how it ended up being there. And I said, sure, you know, you guys, you guys wanted to have me, and um, it, it was great for me. I I got to play a ton. I played a lot of center, which is a position I didn't usually play. Lots of power play time, held the puck, lots of you know, lots of time to work on my game and, and work hard. And uh, mm-hmm. when that when the season started, I I don't know if I felt better walking into my first game of the year after you know playing 25 minutes a night and uh, you know getting a getting a battle like that going into the season. That's part of it too, right? I mean, even though the, the levels aren't really comparable, you know, the NHL is the best league in the world. Game speed, even at that level, is is different to practice, right? And staying sharp, is so key. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I always say as you go, you go to work out in the summer, your first skate with other players, you usually think you're out of shape because it's that, that level up. And then you just, you know, you go to training camp, it's another level, exhibition, another level, and then, then full on. And then playoffs is a whole new level. So it, it's, it was great to be able to, to play competitively, have that contact. Have, and the, the competition was great. Like we, we had a lot of good games. Um, a lot of good players over there, and uh, I think for me, it was the best decision I could have made going into that year. I signed a good contract after that season. Mm. That's just kind of history. Yeah, I think you kind of you kind of summed that up nicely because we remember the lockout in two thousand four, two thousand five. You were in junior uh, in the Ontario League, yeah. and mm. you know you saw a lot of guys who went out of the NHL. Maybe they were on a contract year, maybe not, and then they didn't play. They sat it out, and then they didn't yeah. play. They never made it back to the NHL. Yeah. So keeping keeping sharp. Yeah, most guys, like, even you look at this situation right now, most guys haven't been off the ice this long in mm. their entire life since they're, you know, five or six years old. They've been playing hockey. And so if you go to – if you take a full year off playing hockey and then try and jump back in, it's it's definitely harder. And the older you get, obviously, the, the harder mm. it gets, as I, as I find out now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy how much time has passed since then. It just it doesn't feel mm-hmm. like that long ago. Um, but cast your mind back if you can. I mean, I, I think you said you don't quite remember how the the commentary move came about, but I guess your agent came to you and said, "Look, what, what you know, what yeah. are we doing here?" You say, "I want to play," and somehow you ended up talking to Paul Thompson and hearing the yeah, Brummie accent um, for the first time. I, yeah, I think it was even through my dad. I don't even know if it was through my agent that he got in contact with Tomo and. Uh, yeah, we started talking at that point. It was, I think, the beginning of October. I, I got over there or mid-October, but I, I said I need to play and I need to do it now. So mm-hmm. whoever whoever wants to take me, it's not like I was coming over to, to get rich or anything like that. But, uh, you know, it, it ended up being a, a great fit for me and, you know, met a lot of great guys, guys I'd played against, you know, 
guys that, like Luke Agner who or Mike Agner who lived in my hometown and mm-hmm. uh you know played with growing up with his brother and then all of a sudden playing with him so you know it, it was it was awesome to to come over and and enjoy it and the fans it was it was a really fun experience for me that's for sure I guess you I guess you didn't really know what you were going to walk into as well did did you uh kind of have a, an inkling of the the media frenzy and everything and you got pretty much straight off the plane right and onto the ice yeah i, I came flew red eye and tom will pick me up in birmingham and came straight to practice so uh i uh, honestly i had no idea never watched the game ehl i've never didn't know much about the league i just knew i was going to play some hockey and it's, that was what i was missing at the time and the experience just to be able to come over and and travel around and you know meet new meet new guys and, and see new cities and uh you know come live in, in beautiful england for a bit because I guess as well, you didn't really know how long it'd be, right? It could be four weeks. It could be, you know, four yeah. months. You didn't know. <laughs> yeah, honestly, had no idea. I just knew I had to had to get my skates on, start playing if uh, if I wanted to be ready. And uh, luckily, the Blades were were there for me. Yeah, we were talking to Tom not that long ago about um, obviously with the games having just been shown uh, online, and he was saying how you know that first practice, uh, you know, he always runs an intense ship. And he, he could just see you go, oh, okay, I get this. This, this. this is kind of what I'm about too. So like you said, yeah. that, that, that great fit um, kind of, I guess, worked, for, worked both ways. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, me and Tom will go along great. He, he's a great coach. He, he's a really personal guy. Obviously, you guys have talked to him. He's a, he's a great guy to have a conversation with and, and kick back and, and, uh, and talk about things. And I think as soon as I got there, you know, my respect level for him was high and his was the same for me. And, I don't think you can ask too much more from a coach or, or anyone really. If they show you that respect, uh, I'm going to work hard for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that usually works out. There was a big rivalry at the time with Nottingham. You know, they're 45 mm-hmm. minutes to an hour up the road. Um, your first game in front of the home fans was a packed house, assist, a, a fight yeah. in the corner, and they were going nuts. That must have been a really, really cool, I guess, homecoming for you. Yeah, it would uh... – it, it was pretty cool, you know. It, when I went over there, I was like, "Okay, don't don't injure yourself. Don't be don't be trying to fight everyone. You know, <laughs> take it easy. First game, I get in the fight. I'm like, I can't stop it. I can't. Nah. <laughs> I can't not be intense. So, uh, you know, it, it was cool. You get the crowd going and and all that, and that's that's why you play the game, man. That's yeah. why you you live for moments like that. So it was uh, it was fun. It was just a hard play, if I remember right. You chip the puck in. Hit the uh, yeah, forward on the back check. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, someone, someone comes at you and the gloves come off. It's just natural instinct for me, I guess. So, uh, and away we went. But uh, I guess at the end of the day, I probably knew that was going to happen my first game. I don't know how many first games I've been with teams, and that, that's usually the way it <laughs> try and send a message. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, you want to pick up where? Uh... Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned just a, a moment ago, you, you know, it was, it was good to connect with Mike Egner, who was sort of like a, a you know, local to you back, back home. Um, there's a few sort of, he was, you know, he's obviously quite a big character. Um, yeah. But there were, you know, that, that team that year, there, was, there were quite a few big characters on the side. Yeah, yeah, there definitely was. Uh, well, he was Jeremy Domish. <laughs> it was a, he, he was a wild card. He was, he was pretty big character. Um, yeah, big Ben Olsen. Yeah, hmm. Russell Cowley was there, who's obviously everyone knows Russell Cowley in uh, Coventry. <laughs> Dustin Cameron, uh, some of the younger guys, Selby, Griffin, like they're all kids that uh, it was a fun time, and we had, we had a good time when we were at the rink, that's for sure, and away from it. And do you think that was part of the reason why you enjoyed it? That it was, you just say, it was a fun time. So, yes, it was hard yes. work, and yes, you were getting value from it, but it was enjoyable as well. Yeah, it was a unique experience in that in which the pressure level for me playing hockey coming up to there had been a lot higher. It had been just been building every time. And then being able to kind of relax and, and know where you sat. You know, when you come up through minor leagues, you every game is like, I don't know what where I'm going to be at today. I don't know what, you know, can play good one night and something can happen in the minors and someone gets sent down, you're out of the lineup. So you're, you always have that pressure to perform and, and really, you know, be on your toes. And that, not that I wasn't coming to Coventry, but being able to sit back and go, okay, I know, I know what they want from me. And now I just get to play hockey and have a good time. It was, uh, it was pretty fun. And 
you kind of alluded to it a moment ago as well. That you know, the, but the the last game against Sheffield, you know, that was a yeah. that was a pretty big moment. I mean, mm-hmm. um, it it was a tough it was a tough game as well. Going three one down quite early on, it was yeah. The the team had to kind of fight their way back, didn't they? Yeah, uh, I think I don't know. Was it New Year's Day that game? Or yep, I think it was. Yeah, so it was a uh, yeah, it was a good game and. Uh, I even just sitting back and watching those clips, it's kind of hard to even remember that happening. You know, mm-hmm. then everyone chanting my name, mm-hmm. scoring 39th minute, which I didn't really even know at the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and then I guess I, I think I had the empty netter as well to, to end it. So um, I guess I couldn't have wrote it down too much better than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's going to be the last game. And I think you you knew at that point and uh, that everybody knew you were leaving that you 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 yeah. were going back you were going back to to the US to to sort of get involved in the NHL. You weren't quite clear at the time that it when it was starting. Am I right? Is that you were just told um, think, go back to the NHL? It's probably in yeah. the next few weeks. They pretty much said you yeah you have about a week or two weeks, so we're going to start up. So um, you know we decided that that was the best time to to make the move and and try and get settled in again so um off we went but, uh, but it was a I great think, last game i think other players left earlier and you kind of sort of hung around you were quite if i if i remember rightly you were quite keen yeah. to sort of stick it out through that last little period against sheffield in those those kind of new year's day games yeah i figured per, on a personal level if i came over there to play why why leave two weeks before and get out of shape in that two weeks you know that mm-hmm. I came over. I might as well play till I could, and um, and I di- I did. I grew to. It's a hockey team. Any any team I played for, it's usually once those doors close, it's pretty much the same thing in that room. And you know, I knew they're big games, and if I didn't have to leave that day, why not? Why not play and want to be able to to do like a farewell game type thing and help the guys out? And uh, I was happy I could. I mean, and as you mentioned, two goals. The game winner of that penalty shot, you get the empty netter as well. Um, is is that the perfect leaving present? Could it have been any better? I could have scored more goals. But, <laughs> 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 but I'd say that was that was pretty good. And uh, yeah, I think that is my only penalty shot in professional hockey. No way. <laughs> Almost positive that's my only penalty shot in professional hockey. So um, yeah, it, it was awesome. I, uh, I do think about it quite a bit. The amount of times Coventry comes up in conversation is uh, is pretty impressive to me. Or maybe it's just how much fun I had there that, that wow. I bring it up more often. But uh, it's, if you're going to have one, you make it may as well make it a good one, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. S- some yeah. guys would go flashy there and go high glove. You just ripped it five. Yeah. Bit of speed. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. You know, shoot it hard. <laughs> Close your eyes, shoot it hard. Yeah. Uh, that game, you got man of the match. Um, which maybe was a little bit inevitable. I don't know, uh, <laughs> but you know, you t- certainly I'd argue you deserved it. Two goal, two goals, game winner, win for the home team. Um, but uh, you know, it, we've mentioned already the the elite league is not the NHL, and things are done a little bit differently. Mm. Man of the match, <laughs> man of the match interviews in the NHL. You know, hockey night in Canada, white towel. Yeah, you get you get, you get on a, <laughs> In the blaze, do you, you know? Do you remember going, being sort of effectively thrown in the bar in Coventry and put a microphone in your face? Is that you know? What's yeah. the, you know? Is there any other big differences? Yeah, I don't know if anyone threw me in a bar over there, but I was in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little different, but I always laugh. Like we used to go in the pub after every game and have drinks with the fans, and it's a much different dynamic of fan. Um, and say in the NHL, it's more take a picture, get an autograph. And that gets to you kind of after a bit. I get it, fans, they want their pictures and that. And, but I'd much rather sit down and have a beer with you and or or a conversation and mm-hmm. shake your hand than, than just force a picture or whatever. So mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed it. You got to, you know, you got to know some people. And, and uh, yeah, I, I, it was a great dynamic. It was, it was a lot of fun to be part of. I have to say, uh, you probably don't remember, um, but the last man of the match interview that you did on New Year's Day, um, it was me interviewing you in the bar. And <laughs> okay. I kind of just left you there because the fans weren't going <laughs> to let you go. <laughs> and I wasn't, uh, I thought right. I, I was going to, like, I'm not, I'm not hanging around for this. 
because <laughs> you, I suspected you were probably going to be there for the duration of the yeah. night until your flight. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no, all right. I was putting the pints on Tomo's tab anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> And something I uh, we spotted on the on the uh, social medias that you kind of picked up on one of the on one of the quotes. Um, Tomo said you had the worst car on the team <laughs> in one of the interviews. I mean, was it really yeah. that bad? He gave it to me for one, so that, <laughs> like that that's on him, not me. I didn't pick it. it I believe it was called a. Uh, Peugeot or something. <laughs> I got a picture somewhere that I'll have to send over, but it was uh, it, it was fitting. We'll say it was a fitting car. It was good because the uh, first couple of days I hit probably four or five curbs driving on the other side of the car, the other side of the road. It was a bit of an adjustment, but uh, yeah, it got me from point A to B. Huh? And you know, if you were to sort of look back over the whole experience uh, in Coventry, you know, what would be you know what other other than the penalty shot because i think we've established that that was a pretty cool thing but what would be the best sort of standout moment of your time in coventry on or off the oh, ice man. on or off the ice um there's a lot man the, the, some of the friendships have, have been really good shay guthrie's a guy that mm. I, i've still talked to on and off i think he actually moved up near me so uh you know, we met up even when I was playing in Boston and I'd see him in whatever city and, you know, he'd meet up and have a few pints. And that's that's always been uh, the best part about the relationships you make. You know, you got guys you, you play with, you'll see them all over. So I, I think that was awesome. But uh, on my – I believe it was my dad's birthday. We drove up to Fife, I think, <laughs> or somewhere. And I gave him, like, hey, Dad, you, you want to hop on the bus with the guys <laughs> for this trip? And – He's thinking pro hockey. Yeah, we'll travel, but I don't think he understood we were going seven hours each way. And <laughs> coming back, and then I remember walking back to the, uh, his hotel after we got back, and he's like, oh, I can see how you get a little tired of that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to play the game either. So, uh, yeah, there, I think that was an awesome thing, you know, that Tom let me bring my dad on that trip. And, uh, mm-hmm. um you know, we've done a lot of dad strips on with other teams over here, but to be able to experience there, that was something that I always remember for sure. Mm-hmm. Cool. Have you been keeping an eye on the club since you left? I've, you had a lot going on in your career, obviously. But... Yeah, uh, I've been kind of back and forth. I've had some <laughs> friends that have played there. So, uh, you know, Kale Tanaka, I've, I've oh, yeah. <laughs> really, I'm really good friends with him really, and played with his younger brother and junior. We still hang out and talk quite frequently. And I think, I don't know if Corey played there. Yeah, he played in Hull. Yeah, yeah. yeah he played in Hull, yeah. So, uh you know, I watched a little bit there, and then every once in a while, honestly, through conversation, it comes up that someone's friends playing over in England, and next thing you know, I know another guy that that's playing in Coventry. So uh, it, it's surprising how many guys have have been through there or played for there that I've ran into, and uh, um, it, it seems like the team's doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah. You guys informed me. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, this year was. Uh stopped a little short for us. We were the hottest team in the last 30 games going into the playoffs. We were a couple points off top spot. And, you know, Coventry, when you were here, were kind of very different to what it is now. Um, Kind of the glory years were were kind of still around and we won a championship the year before you were here. And, you know, Coventry Mm -hmm. was still one of the dynamic teams. It kind of died a little, I think, after you left. Um, And and now it looked like this year was going to be the start of a resurgence. So I think when... Oh, that's good the COVID thing sorts itself out and we can all go back to playing. There's, there's two and a half, 3,000 Blaze fans really kind of keen to <laughs> yeah. see what yeah. happens. And, you know, from recruitment, you know how it is. And, you know, when teams rebuild, um, it doesn't yeah. always work out with who you bring in or whatever. So I think we've got a really good mm-hmm. call this year. And um, the, the leading goal scorer this year was British. You know, the first British goal scorer, oh, yeah. uh, leading goal scorer. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, don't think, I, I don't think he was playing... In, it weren't in the elite league when you were around. You might have been in juniors mm. still. Mm. Um, but yeah, the first time um, a Brit has led yeah. the goal who, columns who from Coventry. A guy called Luke Ferrara. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he played in I Sheffield before he came. No, no, no. Okay. He's, he's, he, he's, he shares our birthday there. Me and you are June 7. He's June 7. Oh, there you go. Mike Madonna is June 7. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Milan Lucic, I think, is in there too. Is, is Lucic June 7? Yeah, yeah. Jeez. I keep finding this out. But anyway, you know, we were talking about. Um, I was just saying about how the kind of the, where the blaze are at. Uh, you you came at a really interesting time for the league as well because I think the league was ten years old 
I might be wrong on, yeah. on that year. It was still pretty new. Yeah. And it had kind of figured out its identity, hadn't it? I mean, there were a lot yeah. of tough guys, you know, a few yeah. years prior, there was yeah. still a couple hanging around, but that it wanted to be a legit hockey league um, mm-hmm. in terms of the, the, the on-ice talent. And that was evident that year too. Yeah. I thought uh... – I, I never played games in the East Coast, but I've played a lot of games in the NHL, and I, it's not too far off, you know, other than you you have three lines, and and some lines aren't aren't playing as much as others. But uh, I think the competition definitely went up. I think it helped me when I was there. There was a couple other NHL guys on other teams as well, and um, <clears throat> I thought I thought it was good. I, I suggested <laughs> going to the British League to more players than you could probably count because I think it's a great, a great league to go in as a North American when you, there's tons of imports, the style is the same. And, mm. and for a lot of guys coming up trying to get over to Europe, it's, it's a great way to start your career in Europe. Maybe you stay, maybe you, you move on to, to something else. But uh, I think it's as a transition league to Europe from here, it's uh, the style is definitely mm. very similar. It sounds like you're not really surprised where the league is now. Um, it's it's more, uh, becoming a really hot destination. Yeah. Team Team Great Britain uh, are playing your boys in the world. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a huge feat because a couple of years yeah, ago awesome. we were a couple of tiers below. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great, and that, I think you look at the the passion of the fans that are at the games, and uh, I think British people the way they look at you know sports like rugby and that 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 have that physical high intensity and i see it could be taken off and you know i I believe when i was there there the british team or the yeah the british team was trying to do some some extra work and recruiting and trying to work on their program and it Mm. obviously it seems to have paid off yeah for sure i talk about international Mm. hockey in your under 18 year you played with team canada as well that must have been cool yeah that was pretty fun we went to uh we went to sweden and played there and uh yeah, it was a, that was a great experience. Uh, we, we didn't end up winning anything, but, uh, you know, had a lot of fun for sure. You went to a Mem Cup too, right, with Belleville? Yep, yep, with Belleville. My last year we were in the Mem Cup, lost uh, in the semis to Kitchener. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was a great time. Uh, pretty pretty great memories that I have. And uh, that, that team, we still like, go on a golf trip every year with, like, four guys from my junior team. We still nice. go. Who was, out, so. Who was on that team? Who was on that team? P.K. Subban, Sean Mathias, oh, wow. Mike Murphy, Eric Tangrady, Jan wow. Merz. These are all guys All guys that played NHL yeah, yeah. for a decent amount of time. Yeah. Uh, that Subban guy's yeah. name is familiar. <laughs> yeah, that guy. You ever heard of him? Yeah. Yeah, so. he, yeah, he, uh, yeah he was there. So, we had, you know, we had, we had a great team. Uh, had a lot of fun. We, we ended up losing in game seven to Kitchener, actually, which – it's unfortunate in the in the uh, OHL finals, but they were hosting, so we got in the Mem Cup. But you know, it, was a, it was a great great run for us. You were team captain as well. You, you swept that yep. under the rug a little there. That's an honor, though, right? Yeah. You wear a letter. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I've always taken a lot of pride in, in being able to wear a letter, and uh, you know, I got to wear one a bit this year as well. Hmm. Worn one throughout my career in different teams, and um, anytime you get guys on your team to look at you as a leader, it's uh, mm. something to feel good about for sure. I think we've got to talk about the NHL days as well. Stu, do you want to pick this up? Yeah. Um, so you were, you drafted round four by Anaheim. Um, how much did you know about their interest and maybe other teams interest before you were, you got picked? Um, well, I went to the combine, um, the NHL combine and had meetings with, I don't even know, probably <laughs> 20 of the 30 teams, maybe, you know, you, it's kind of a whirl when you meet with all the teams, I ask you a bunch of questions and I was not one of the teams that I met with. Though. So oh, wow. uh, whatever, whatever that shows. And they met with uh, uh, Sean Mathias, the guy on my team, they met with him twice and asked them a bunch of questions about me or something. So I don't know <laughs> who knows what their, their strategy is, but I, I really had no idea. Um, to me, it, it honestly didn't, didn't matter where I went. I would have. I would have gone to any team that wanted to pick me in the NHL. That's uh, that. That really. I never thought of a team. That obviously, there's teams that Toronto is close to home. I'd watch mm. them growing up, but I just wanted to get drafted. And I couldn't, I couldn't have said where where it should be or whatnot. So uh, going to Anaheim was amazing, and I I'd, I'd never been to California before going there. 
Um, getting to live there for so long. I have a lot of good friends that still live in Newport Beach. Lived on the beach. I'd walk my dog on the beach every day, wear shorts to practice, skateboard around. <laughs> you know, like it was, it was unbelievable. You got to play in the NHL and live like a just a normal guy. No one knew who you were there. You just, you know, and I think that helped with our team a lot. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you could go places and no one, no one knew what you're up to. So, uh, you know, I think it was great for team bonding. But going to Anaheim was was an awesome, awesome time for me. Yeah, I, I've, I, you know, spoken to a few players and and who've been in and around, and that, that sort of Southern California lifestyle is a uh, is pretty nice and very uh, <laughs> yeah. attractive to uh, to to any yeah. sort of person. So to have a hockey mm-hmm. playing there is is pretty cool. Um, but obviously, your first your first few seasons um, with the Ducks, you weren't there full time, and you were kind of splitting with the AHL. I mean, mm-hmm. how difficult is it to play under those circumstances where you're kind of bouncing around? Do you ever feel like home? You know, what? what uh, how does it come to, to you as a person? To me, as a person, it's a uh, it's something you don't really think about at that age. Yeah. I found, you know. Uh, <laughs> I played – while I was with Anaheim, I played for Iowa, Iowa, Syracuse, Norfolk, Toronto, San Antonio, all under the same mm. head club. So, really, yeah. I lived out of a suitcase for, you know, <laughs> how many years. You'd, and half the time, you'd get sent down and you only had two days' worth of clothes and you're going down to the minors for a month. So, you you know, you there's ups and downs the whole time. Um and it's it does start to wear on you, especially now. I got a daughter, have a son on the way, married. You know, it's the last few years, kind of going up and down with the AHL and the NHL again and doing that. It's a totally different feeling than when I was younger. When I was younger, it was like, all right, what what city am I going to? What plane am I on? And the way I go. And then now it's now it's a lot different when you when you got to make those changes and, and start moving families and stuff. It, uh, it's a it's a little harder on you, but. Um, you know that's that that's part of the part of the game. Mm. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, you. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, I guess particularly you mentioned about not knowing what team where you're going to be headed off. I mean, oh nine oh oh nine ten, Anaheim didn't have an AHL affiliate, so you could have been literally anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's when we started in uh, San Antonio. After I got sent down, I went there on loan. I was there for. Just over a month, mm-hmm. and then they're like, all right, they're not playing you enough. We're moving you to Toronto, which I was <laughs> excited about. I'm pretty much hometown. <laughs> and then I get to Toronto. I played three games and got called up for the rest of the year. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I guess that worked out as well. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of different when you don't know where you're going mm-hmm. or what's what's going on. But it's kind of got to put it in the back of your head and keep playing. Yeah, and then 2011, you got a, you got a full – you know, full ride, 70 games, I think, mm-hmm. uh, with Anaheim yeah. that year. Uh, was there a moment when you're on that roster and you re- you kind of realise, actually, I- I'm sticking here, you know, I- this is full time now, there's no AHL for me. <laughs> when, when did you kind of, that? when did that penny drop? Um, I think after the year that I was in uh, Coventry and I signed my next deal, mm-hmm. one, it was... 8.50 and one something, I believe, or either way, I'd signed for a million dollars. And I, I remember like saying to my wife, like, holy, I just, I just signed a piece of paper for, <laughs> for a million dollars. Like I'm, I'm making, I'm not on a two-way contract anymore. I'm on a, mm-hmm. I'm on a one-way and I'm here. And, um, and that, that's a great feeling, but it also, you know, I also signed a $20 million contract and got sent down two and a half years later. So, I don't think the money really matters <laughs> when it comes down to it. It, uh, it. it can all change real quick. You gotta, you gotta keep up with what you're doing. So. That's the game, isn't it? And it, yeah. it's a hard business. I mean, you, you mean you what? You're 31 now, 32 in a mm-hmm. few weeks. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, you you had some stellar seasons to to earn that money. You know, that one year where you guys went to the uh, Western Conference Final. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, twenty-two goal campaign. You you lit up the playoffs, and yeah. um, that must have been incredible. I mean, that must be the top of the world feeling. Yeah, man, that's like it's unbelievable. We I watched that that, that goal uh, overtime winner in Game Five. That's that's kind of the the goal I remember. You know, playing hockey. That's uh, playing in the playoffs is the best. Playing against Chicago in the Western Conference Conference mm-hmm. Finals is. 
it was pretty awesome. Uh, you know, that those are things that, you, that I could never forget. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I definitely enjoyed those. Something's just jumped into my head. You were talking a minute ago about moving around. Do you remember the Mike McKenna goalie? Yeah. Yeah. And he had uh, that, that period where I think he was with the Canucks for one day and then got traded again. Yeah, down to Florida like, like that. yeah. It, it, that, that, that can get to you when you you don't know what's going on. Every, every trade deadline's a new, uh, yeah. pack your base type day, but, uh, Hey, that's, uh, that's part of it. So. Cause you, cause you're with the Rangers now and you got moved yeah. as part of the Rick Nash trade, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and is is that kind of the goal to try and work your way back up full time with the Rangers and prove that you still got some gas left in the tank there? Yeah, well, the, this was my last year of my contract, so it, uh, they say they're going to finish this season. Hopefully, you know we do. And I, they've canceled the AHL season, but you know they're going to need players up in in New York uh, if they do start up. So eventually, yeah, I'd love to be back in the NHL. You know, I don't know what next year will bring. Honestly, really don't have a an idea this year I had a good year in the HL was playing well and mm. um, hopefully raise some heads and people realize I can still play and play at that level. And, um, you know, like we said about the contracts, that's always kind of been a thing now making, making a large amount of money. If you're not scoring all the goals, it, you mm. know, all of a sudden you're not worth it. You might, you might still be able to play, but you cost too much. So yeah, you know, it'll kind of be a fresh start next year of, you know, going in and seeing what, uh, what happens. If the NHL don't come calling, um, what's next? Are you, are you looking at maybe Europe as an option? I, I know a team in the Elite yeah. League that would take you back, brother, if you wanted to come back. <laughs> i got to ask yeah, the question. I, I might would come you, calling. Um, would you do it? I, like, yeah. Would you do it? Yeah, we, my wife and I have talked about going to Europe. Um, if it doesn't work out uh, with an NHL club or whatever, if the situation's right, we would definitely look at doing it. It's going to be a lot different with, two young kids but I think it'd be yeah. a great experience to be able to have them see another culture maybe pick up some of another language and, and I think I, I just like being able to go over there and and move around and kind of see see what there is out there and I think Coventry kind of opened my eyes to that if if I didn't go over there and play I don't know if I'd be so excited to go to Europe but it's, it's something I definitely have on the, in my mind to get back there and, and play. Yeah. Well, it's not like you need anyone to sell you on the Elite League if you did fancy it. <laughs> a couple of young kids, English speaking, it's easy to get yeah. around, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Perfect. Man no, of the match gets a case of beer and you're set. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you know where all the good golf spots are as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I only played once when I was over there, but uh, I'd play more if I came back. Atta boy. <clears throat> oh, man, I've, I've really enjoyed this. Stu, have you got anything else you want to... Because you're an LA no. Kings fan. You, you're not... Grill yeah, I, yeah, it does. It does wrangle a little bit, but you know, <laughs> the, I, I, the the time that Matt was was playing with the Ducks, you know, two Stanley Cup rings for the for the Kings. So you know, there's oh, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, it, it's really appreciate you coming on and spending some time talking with us. Obviously, you know, it, it was it was a short time, but you certainly made a big impact here in Coventry, mm. uh, and you know, well thought of, and we we really appreciate you to coming on. Oh, no, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's obviously pretty apparent. It made a big impression on me too. So, uh, you know, thanks for thanks for having me, and to all the Blaze fans, thanks thanks for making my time so memorable and cool. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Blaze fans, everybody, oh, yeah. everybody else watching this, thank you so much for joining us on another episode. As always, stay safe. Do what the uh, the men upstairs are telling you to do, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully be back at an ice rink pretty soon. Take care.